Hi everyone, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm a third year medical student at Warwick Medical School. Now, this is going to be my first attempt at one of these kind of vlogger favourite style videos. I just thought it would be a chance to give you guys an insight as to some of the things I'm doing and engaging with that aren't medical. But before I go into that, a very quick update. My upload rate has not been quite what I kind of wanted it to be going into the new year, basically because I've started my specialty rotations on a surgical block, which has a lot of on calls, a lot of late nights. And as someone who likes to have a million and one projects going on all the time to keep me busy, um, it's been quite inflexible actually and a little bit frustrating for me. I like the ability to move things around to free myself up. We've just had a lot of things like teaching sessions scheduled right in the middle of the day and that that's really annoying because it means you obviously have to go all the way to hospital. But if they're between like 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. it also stops you engaging with either the morning clinics or theatre sessions that you might want to go to or the afternoon because you'll have to either leave early or go in late which our consultants don't really want us doing particularly if it's a surgical operation but I'm loving being back on surgery um, I want to be a surgeon for those of you that don't know of exactly what variety I'm not 100% sure but it's been nice at least being back in a clinical environment. And it's currently 1.44 a.m. Um, when I'm filming this because we've had like a really nice games night. Um, tonight we've had some of our friends over, just chilled out, which is really, really important to do, but this video needs to go up. So here I am at two in the morning <laughs> shooting this video, which will be edited for you guys and hopefully go live in a few hours. So let's start right away with the books that I've been reading through January. And this first one is actually set. <laughs> Right behind me, this is The Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gawande. Now, I'm sure loads of you will have heard of Atul Gawande, particularly if you're thinking about going to med school. I need to keep that away. I'm not used to this new lighting setup. This isn't my favourite of his books. Um, my favourite is actually Better, A Surgeon's Notes on Performance, but this one is also really important and it's about the power of checklists. It basically uses a load of clinical cases and scenarios to show us the importance of checklists and working methodically. Anyone who's been within 10 feet of an operating theatre probably knows what the WHO checklist is. You do it all the time before surgery, before any surgery or operation. So who is the surgeon? Have we got the right patient? What operation are we doing today? What side are we operating on? And as I say, it's told through stories of how these checklists are actually put into practice and what they mean for doctors and health staff. My favourite of the stories um, demonstrates how they basically get rid of a particular type of infection in an intensive care unit just by changing the cleaning practices and doing very little else. It's really powerful and a really good read. The other book that I've been consuming avidly this month, um, or I suppose listening to, is the audiobook of Catch Me If You Can by Frank Abagnale. Now it's the story on which the now very famous movie with Tom Hanks and Leo DiCaprio is based and it's just absolutely unbelievable. It's really, really gripping and thrilling. Um, it's basically about this con man who impersonates a pilot and then swindles his way, kind of forging checks across America and then across the wider world and gets into these insane situations. He impersonates a doctor at a children's hospital and then like a university professor and just keeps getting away with more and more stuff. It's totally gripping and I stayed awake far, far later than I should have done several nights just to hear more of it. It's absolutely fantastic. Music for this month, um, the first one I want to talk about is a really recent release. Now, just for some context, I love listening to music. I listen to it all the time. I grew up in a musical household. Um, I play several instruments and when I was growing up, there was always music being played somewhere. So I make sure that's still a part of my life now. And I try to listen to a bit of everything, particularly stuff that I'm not used to. And this first one is actually a little bit surprising because I'm not normally a fan of hip hop or rap, that kind of music in general. I'm more into my kind of classic rock, blues, soul type of stuff. But this first one is Eminem's new album, Music To Be Murdered By. I don't think I've really appreciated until now quite how clever the guy is. Um, just listening to some of this stuff, both lyrically and musically, it's really, really interesting. And just purely from the musicianship perspective, um, I found it really interesting. Obviously some of the subject matter that he touches on in the album is really interesting as well. Next is the Hamilton soundtrack, the stage musical. 
and this isn't exclusive to this month. I've been listening to it a lot over the last few months. I'm a bit late to the game, um, but I absolutely adore it. Listen to it all the time. I still haven't managed to see the show live. If any of you have seen it, please tell me where you saw it, um, whether it's worth going to see the live one even now. I hope that it still is because I really want to go and see it. It's constantly playing somewhere in our house. My favourite track is one called The Room Where It Happens, um, kind of a more Broadway type number than the rest of the show, which is why I really like it. It's really high energy and kind of bombastic. Um, but please, if you've seen the show, I want to know where you saw it, how good it was, and what your favourite song from the show is, because I think it's a fantastic listen. And lastly, how could I not talk about the music of Ollie Bond, my very musical and very talented housemate, studying medicine um, on the course with me at Warwick. And today, um, which is a good thing this video is going live today, is actually the launch of his new single, which I've left a link to down in the description. It's really good. Like, I'm not just saying that because he's my friend. Like, genuinely, the guy is really, really talented. So please go and give that a listen on Spotify if you want. I was really lucky, and um, Ollie asked me to play as part of his backing band for the new single launch, which happened on Monday. Um, I've not gigged live for years, but um, during my sixth form kind of college, for those of you elsewhere, um, days, we used to gig two, maybe even three times a week um, in the rock blues band that I played in back home. So I played live a lot when I was younger and that's something I really missed being at med school. That was really fun to be able to get back up on stage again for the first time in years and play as part of a live band. And as well as that, I was able to actually contribute some electric guitars. I am a guitarist by most of my training and experience. Do one of his songs, which is on Spotify as well. So, you know, it will do me a favor as well. Go and listen to some of that music. Now let's talk about movies. Um, I'm not kind of a movie nut as much as some people are. Some of my friends are massive, what do we call them? Cinema files? I'm not sure what the word is. But basically, you know, I try and make sure that I've seen the classics and I usually just go with what my friends recommend to me. So actually my younger brother Dom got me this for Christmas. He's nearing the end of his astrophysics degree. I'm super proud of him. I'm super proud of Charlie as well, who is at law school. I'm a very proud big brother. He got me this for Christmas and this is Arietti. Now this is one of my favourite films. It's an animated um, Japanese movie made by a company called Studio Ghibli. Ghibli, I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. Someone can educate me in the comments. This studio makes amazing animated films. I think a good way to think of them, if you've never heard of them, is like they are to this type of animation as Disney is to the kind of classic 2D animation that a lot of us grew up with in the West. It's a retelling of the borrower's story, so tiny people kind of foraging and using what they can find. And the colors are just amazing. It's all kind of hand painted, beautiful animation with an amazing soundtrack. And Dom getting me that then put me on a binge watching my favorites by this same studio, which are uh, My Neighbor Totoro, which everyone should watch. Um, Spirited Away, which is a, a slightly kind of disturbing, dark um, thing, but amazing, amazing watch. And and another one called Princess Mononoke as well. So they're all made by the same studio. They're all absolutely amazing. TV wise, um, because I've been quite busy, I've just been going through the same old reruns that I normally regress to when I, I don't have a lot of mental space and I just want to unwind. So for me, that means Scrubs, that means Peep Show, um, the UK sitcom with David Mitchell and Robert Webb, it's so, so funny. Like exactly my sort of sense of humor and the type of characters that we can all relate to. And a couple of new things, um, I've been catching up on the new series of Rick and Morty, um, high IQ that I have, <laughs> obviously. Um, I've been really enjoying the new season. I thought season three dipped a little bit, um, wasn't quite as sort of dark and disturbing as I like from the show. And then this new series has completely returned to form um, on that front. The new new series that I've been watching is one called Medical Police. Now, it's a really kind of surreal and bizarre, pretty stupid um, comedy, but it's made by the same people who made Children's Hospital, which again is a kind of dark, surrealist, very black humour series set in an American children's hospital. It's worth a watch. I mean, the, the trailer, if you just go and watch the trailer, it very much speaks for what the whole series is like. It's completely inane and stupid, but when you just want to space out and watch something funny and bizarre, it's it's exactly what you need. Now, sometimes I get questions about my home media setup because people have seen um, screenshots and things. Um, I don't actually subscribe to any services like 
uh, Netflix, you know, Amazon Prime, Spotify, things like that, I pretty much exclusively get my own copies of media with as little kind of copy protection as I can. And the reason for that is that I have a home media server set up and I use the client Plex for that, which you can see on the screen here. It basically lets me organize all my content from DVD rips and things like that as I want it in a really nice and professional looking setup. If you'd like to see a video on how my home media setup works, I'd be really happy to do one because I'm very happy with the way it works. I can stream any of my media files from the server or I can wirelessly sync content to the device, to my phone or my tablet, whatever I want, so I can watch it when I don't have a connection. And again, I can do that from anywhere, which I really appreciate. On the gaming front, um, for those of you who don't know, I am a bit of a gamer. I used to do it a lot more than I do. I don't have the time really anymore. And at the moment, this just has to be things that I can pick up and put down in kind of 15, 20 minute stints. Just for this first one, me and my friends have this tradition where during events like our birthdays or Christmas or whatever, um, what we do is in our group chat that we have on Facebook, these are friends from my old degree, we go through each other's wish lists on um, whatever gaming client we use and you can see what people are wishing for, as it were, and we all buy each other something from our wish list. So we all end up with like five or six new games from each other at Christmas to play. And the major one that I've been playing of these is something called Hollow Knight. Now this is a 2D kind of hand-drawn, kind of cute looking platformer thing. You play as this bug knight, essentially, exploring a sort of dilapidated and underground series of caverns and things like that it's absolutely stunning visually it's really responsive and the music is just 10 out of 10. it's really challenging as well actually even for a bit of a veteran like me someone who's been gaming for years it's deceptively difficult but the art style by itself is more than worth the price of the game and the developers keep updating it so it's something that they clearly have put a lot of love into. I've also been having a lot of fun with Jedi Fallen Order which is the latest Star Wars game. It's a big open world 3D platformer and you basically just get to be a Jedi um, jumping around these huge obviously Star Wars themed environments and doing all the things that Jedi do, swinging lightsabers around and using the force. And then the last one that I've been playing is something called Enter the Gungeon, which is this, it's difficult to describe. It's like a pixel art, bullet hell, roguelike dungeon runner. What I mean by that is every time you play the game, it's randomly generated as to what's going to happen. So you have a, a different adventure every time and everything is kind of gun themed, as it were. You're in a dungeon you go around and collect guns bullets are your enemies so you fire guns at guns and there's just a lot going on screen and it there's a lot going on on screen at any one time and it gets a little bit crazy but again it's got a really kind of pumping really lively soundtrack and it's good for just a bit of mind numbing 15 20 minutes where you don't really know what's going to happen and you've got to keep reacting to what happens on screen and it's really entertaining lastly i'm just going to talk about two pieces of tech that i've been using over the last month so while i've been doing these short bits of gaming i've been using this a lot which is what's it called an i ipega ipega some um chinese brand and what it is it's a little bluetooth gamepad that attaches to your phone and actually gives you a proper set of controls so you can see like this, that satisfying noise that it made. It expands apart, you pop your phone in, it connects wirelessly via Bluetooth, it's got its own built-in battery, but it gives you a proper tactile set of buttons and triggers. And it works great with iPhone or Android. It expands to take virtually any size phone, even really big ones. Phones are really powerful little computers now, and I think, I think mobile gameplay is gonna continue to expand. And I particularly love this for using either emulators so we can play, you know, N64, PS1, those older games that we all grew up with on the go and obviously anything simpler than that. You can also use services like Nvidia Game Streaming to stream games from your more powerful desktop PC and then play them wirelessly on your phone, usually working best when you're in the house somewhere else. The other interesting piece of tech, I'm sure you might have seen this on my Instagram, is my WearBuds watch. Now what this is, um, hopefully not gonna obscure myself, it's a kind of chunky looking smartwatch. But the thing that it does is that it contains two wireless earbuds, which just click, hopefully you can hear really satisfying click and vibrate. So basically it's a smartwatch with an inbuilt battery 
that charges to wireless earbuds. It connects wirelessly to your phone. And this was one of those little Kickstarter things I backed on a whim. It's a pretty decent smartwatch as well. Obviously tells the time, has a heart rate, monitor, step counter, all the things you would want your smartwatch to do. And it weighs next to nothing. So actually I don't really notice it on my wrist. It's really comfortable. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. And then the last thing really quickly is I bought a few of these little light panels. There's actually one um, over here. You can probably see a, a larger one that's lighting this video from the side. I've tried to improve my video lighting or at least change it up a little bit. Um, and these panels, they can get super bright. There we go. I mean, you can see, look at that, the sort of difference that these things make. If I point it away and then towards myself from over here, it makes me look a bit gaunt, at least more than usual. But they're really inexpensive and something that I quite like about them as well. The fronts pop off like that, so they're magnetic. And they come with these little plastic filters. You can see like that, it's changed what we call the color temperature. It's much more yellowy orange. So when I shine it back at myself, it doesn't look quite as stark white. And before it's a more orangey glow. And for how inexpensive these things are, and obviously portable, you can just stick them on a tripod. For simple video stuff, really useful. A really quick last piece of bonus tech. If you've not seen these before, these are really inexpensive. It's a USB-A standard mail connector on one end that splits into all the various charging cables that you might need. So on here I've got, what, USB Type-C, Lightning for Apple devices, and then micro USB. Um, so I just stick this in my rucksack. I carry a portable power bank as well. So whenever I need to charge one of my devices or a consultant or one of my medical student colleagues desperately needs a phone charger, you can just whip one of these out and be like, I got you. It's all good. So that's it guys. That's kind of what's been going on with me. I'm very busy on this surgical placement. It's general surgery and urology for me. So I've been seeing cystoscopies, lap coles, some really cool stuff. I'm going to try and see some pediatric surgery because that's a specialty that I find really interesting before the end of this block. And I move on to psychiatry in a couple of weeks, which I'm less jazzed about but we shall see. Please be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to go and check out postgradmedic.com for all my medical application videos and the new whiteboard tutorials that are coming and I'm really excited to do more in this cardiology series at the moment. Take care and I'll see you next time.